I'm with the queen of the night, Catherine Lewick, and Papageno Marcus Verba. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. Uh, both of you are so experienced in these roles. What are some of your secrets to keeping your interpretations fresh? The director always helps me with that every time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, director always helps me with that. Right. Um, I've done 17 different productions, and every time it's different. Mm. Um, and I think David Neese actually really helps me keep this production press. It's, it's the fourth time that I've done this production right. at the Met, and it's always a little different. It's always new and, and exciting, mm. and uh, the Tamar production, you just can't beat it. So, Perfect. Yeah. Great. Lovely. Um, how does this colorful production affect your performances? Well, I'll just take it like it is. Um, I, I, I see things which, uh, which, which are happening around me and uh, I have the right energy at the beginning, I build it up towards the end. And it's like very spontaneously yeah, <clears throat> somehow. Just I mean, happens just like, instantly. yeah, and I take it in and I feel the atmosphere and it's always different and therefore it always stays fresh mm. and therefore I enjoy it. Good. Always. Lovely. I take my inspiration from the other characters on stage because oh, the uh, the thing with Queen of the Night is that she's on stage for 12 and a half minutes. It's right. this enormously famous role that everybody knows yes. with the big aria <laughs> no coming pressure. up soon. Um, right. But, uh, you know, I'm spending most of my time backstage mm. in my dressing room preparing for the next aria because both of the arias are so difficult. Yeah. Um, so I really take take the energy from the people who are already on stage because that's just, uh, it's food for the soul. Right, absolutely. Uh, your two roles are at opposite ends of uh, Mozart's vocal style. What makes them so different in terms of vocal virtuosity? What would you say? Well, You're I mean, it's very, very different. different from each other. First, we have nothing to do with each other on stage. Right, There's no story between us. Right. You're terrified of Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. And I've never seen her. You've never seen me. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, the first act for Papageno is just like going into the story, into the strange story, and the second act is second act is really my thing, yeah. which I love the most because it's really like going through the story until towards the end, and uh, it's just like I know you can build it up and build it up. Right. It's just like so logic. Like the role of Papageno is very logic. Yeah. I don't know how it is with uh, Queen of the Night. Well, I think uh, the the musical style kind of uh, it. it is um, kind of a perfect mirror effect of the characters. I think the, the musical style, it's almost kind of a Baroque style that, that mm. Mozart wrote for the Queen of the Night. Interesting. Um, with right. all the broken coloratura and everything. Right, right. And uh, I think that shows like an, an incredible intensity. And yes. She knows exactly what she wants and oh, she, yes, she, she thinks she knows exactly how to get it. Right. Um, and she's completely desperate, and that you hear that in her music. Right. Whereas also, Papagino, Papagino knows what he wants. He's looking for a <laughs> yeah, but doesn't girl. really know how to <laughs> how to go about it. You know, you're just yeah. kind of floating around, and yeah, it's a little right. more spontaneous. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah. I think for I sure. hear that in in Papagino's music. So, Catherine and Marcus, thanks so much for speaking with me, and toy, Thank toy, you. toy for the second Thanks half. so much. Well, enjoy. enjoy. Everybody enjoys it. Bye. <laughs>